Hi, Kate. I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How's it going? Pretty good. So what attracted you to this project to begin with? You don't do so many different things. Uh, your music duo, um, you do voice acting, you do live action acting. What attracted you to this um, horror short? Well, honestly, it was Adam and Nicole. I am such fans of what they make. And then when they had asked me uh, to do the voice, I was like, heck yeah, whatever you guys want to make, I'm super down. So, um, and then when I read the script, it was so cool. But I have to tell you, I I could never have imagined it was going to be as cool as it actually turned out to be. The visuals and the music and just everything is so beautiful and creepy and uh I am so thrilled with with what the final product is. It's just like really awesome to be a part of. But uh, again, that goes back to just how much I believe in Adam and Nicole and how cool they are. Yeah. How did you prepare to do the voice in this project? Because, well, do you relate to the bleacher at all? <laughs> not exactly I mean, for how things go. Not exactly. I definitely can have loner tendencies. I think I have both like extrovert and then loner. I just kind of shift every once in a while. Um, so yeah, I guess I could lean into my loner tendencies a bit, but um, but I will say I, I really leaned on the directors for, you know, they really had a very clear vision of the sound. And um, we found that creepy voice together, but, it, you know, it was a lot of them going, okay, like lower, creepier, weirder, maybe a little raspier. And then like Hi. we found that voice. And so, hey, what's up? Yay. Hi. You guys look so cool. Oh, you too. <laughs> so we were just talking about how, Kate, um, and you guys decided on the voice for the character. Um, why did you want it to be a bit lower and creepier compared to Kate's natural voice? Um, I think it just matched the character really well. And when we brought the idea to Kate, she tapped right into it. It was like magic. How did you guys come up with the idea? Because it was very much different than expected. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect that, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been it's you you either love it or you you have to think about it. <laughs> Where did you guys um kind of come up with that idea and concept of something that kind of happens to everyone, a lost sock, but then connect it to this way darker past? Yeah, I mean, it was based off of our experience at a local laundromat in Los Angeles. Not having laundry amenities led us to this uh, divine project. <laughs> um, and we used to just track the the locals at this laundromat by recording audio and just kind of like seeing what they're up to. And um, over time, you know, we, we really fell in love with this this uh this person that's so beyond our our expectations of what you know what we were going to do with this project we were just fascinated by this lady the bleacher and we just started tracking her psyche and it, one thing led to another and of course we had to use the endless medium of animation to tell the story um and from there we turned our our experience of of laundry into um, a story that's relatable by where do your missing socks go? Yeah. And I kind of guess what's the backstory is about laundry because laundry mats, even though it's something that like we, we all have to wash your clothes, it does feel like kind of like a creepy experience to see someone <laughs> like launder their clothes. Like it feels like a little too personal in the way. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> I always Why feel you... that way about looking into people's grocery carts. I, you know, it's like you <laughs> yes. really get a glimpse of their life. Yeah. <laughs> yes. True. Why did you guys decide on this style of animation? Well, so we originally were set to do a live action version of this, but because, you know, we're dealing with, you know, people's identities, we decided, you know, we don't want to worry about a lawsuit down the line of copying somebody's you know personal story it's too you know we want to respect them so we just changed all the names and uh altered it and um 
you know, in animation, I feel like you can get away with a lot more than you can with live action, um, especially what you can do. Um, so we did, we decided to make it look as close as possible to stop motion animation as possible um, by, you know, doing it through computers um, with a, a various programs, Photoshop, uh, wow. Blender, um, and yeah, I think I think that was the best way to tell the story through. I mean, I wish we could, I wish we would have done it stop motion. It would have been so so cool. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it would have taken the same amount of time and it would have looked the same. I was going to say, I thought when I first saw it, I thought it was stop motion. I was shocked to find out it wasn't. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like a different style of stop motion, kind of like Uzi. Exactly. In a sense. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. We'll go I'd say that. mission That's accomplished. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> what, what was the hardest scene to put together? Ooh, I think the, the dance sequence, the musical number. That was hard. And then actually the whole thing was kind of challenging um, and really like a <laughs> cool learning experience. But um, the the song, like we didn't, we were like, what, what do they do? Like, what are they going to do with the, it's a dolphin and a lady and they're dancing and singing. Like, what is the choreography? So that was kind of like fun to dive into like musicals and stuff for inspiration. Um, what do you think was the hardest? Um, I think, I think getting the tone right, not, not, Keeping it so keeping it grounded was our, our main focus, even though it's so far from grounded. I feel like if we would have went more whimsical with like the musical number and people are floating and flying and you know like like a an adult swim cartoon for an example, like if we would have went that direction, I feel like we would have completely shot ourselves in the feet um, by by just not not you know just letting yeah we had to keep it grounded and really tell a story and I, I feel like it's a it's a film that's going to do really well in time like a few years people are going to find it and be like oh wow it's incredible um right now I feel like it's it's going to take the viewers a little time to digest personally um I feel like for myself as well like but I mean we we love it but I just thought I'd be honest and tell you how I really feel <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Kate, you have a musical background. How do you kind of connect music to each character you play and voice? You know, I think I read a script like I read music. And it took me a while to realize that. But I grew up playing classical piano. And um, I think I I really, like, in, in a way, look at a script in like it is music. Um, but I, you know, it wasn't a conscious decision. But as I've been doing this for a while I, I kind of put that together like oh yeah like I see the dynamics and where where things go and you know I where to pause and all that stuff so um and obviously it's not just that clear cut but um but yeah I think I'm, I'm grateful for my classical training um and also with that the rehearsal process of like run it run it run it run it that's how I was raised um it's in playing piano so so I think there's that and uh yeah I think I just hear things very musically like I you know like can hear a line different ways you know try them out all different ways I don't know I yeah I think it just kind of seeps into to almost everything I do in some way um yeah I don't know <laughs> I think it would be hard, hard to turn kind of parts off especially creative sides like even when you're acting you're going to think about music when you're doing music you're going to think about acting like I think it would be hard to just shut off a creative valve or it wouldn't serve you in any way. I think that's true. Yeah, I think I think especially with performing live, it is you have to put, bring an element of acting to it and and making sure that you convey what you're trying to say to an audience. So yeah, it, it all works. Yeah. Was it hard to get the short down to eight minutes? Were you thinking a longer? Were you thinking a shorter? What made kind of the eight minutes like perfect for you guys? Um, definitely the edit. Um, yeah, I mean, originally it was 15 minutes and we did not want to overstay our welcome. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this, we get out just in time to mm -hmm. tell our story um, and and really, and really, um, I, I think I really, I really wanted the, me yeah, I think the music um, was, was very strong in this, in this project. And without music with those other five, six, seven minutes, I feel like we would have 
yeah, we would we would have it would have fell a little flat. So we wanted people to, to walk out kind of wanting it to remember the song. And in eight minutes, I feel like at four at the four minute mark, you could easily remember the song or like want to see it again and be like, oh, what was that? It, it, it was definitely a bop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think South by Southwest is like a great place for this to be shown? Like, I feel like it very much fits into like the Austin South by Southwest vibe. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, instant. I mean, we're in Austin right now. We're a little early arriving. We had some things to do here, and yeah, I think you're you're spot on. I think this is the perfect festival and city to showcase this project. Um, I I feel like Sundance was wonderful as well. It was just different. I feel like here it goes. It's more of that you know boot scoot and boogie type of attitude, which is like you know you know look forward don't look back and you know i feel like that's that's this that's this movie I, I feel like it's it's all good yeah it's a great place yeah what i like about south by southwest and festivals like that is that as you were saying that the short is a bit of a slow burn it's gonna hopefully gain kind of like a cult following i feel like I'll watch something and it's like, oh, it premiered at South by Southwest three years ago. Oh, like they knew before me. So I think it's uh -huh. a, a perfect audience for like, if you know, you know, like you'll get it before everyone else. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely think we should have released this as like an extended music video. I think that I can't wait to do that. And down the, after the festival run to see how people react and, market it really as like a, a long music video and not a film i think i think going into your last question i think south by and austin is just such a music city so again music is such our vibe making films it's just like how we think and how we write and how we see the world so yeah we can't wait to see what happens um yeah yes well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about this. I was excited to talk to all of you guys, and I hope to meet you guys soon and probably talk about this and other projects more. Thank you, thank so, you so much. much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Awesome. Also, you had really awesome questions. Thanks for that. Oh, yes. thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank <laughs> yeah. you. It was a great interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah, you, you have amazing. You have amazing energy too. Yeah, like you really. It's really. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. All I have to say is boot, suit, and boogie. That's like <laughs> oh, the yeah. takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> Need shirts that say that. <laughs> well, I will talk to you all guys soon. Uh, to you all Bye, soon. Ariana. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank so you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.